From Oshkosh Community Media Services, this is Oshkosh City Cable 10 and broadcast on 101.9 FM, WOCT Oshkosh. Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report is your preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda and an update from your Oshkosh City Manager. Your hosts, Emily Makowski of Oshkosh Community Media and City Manager, Mark Roloff. Thank you for joining us for your City Manager's Report, your source for all the local hot topics, things happening here in Oshkosh, as well as a preview of the upcoming City Council meeting agenda. I'm your host, Emily Mikowski, joined as always by your City Manager, Mark Roloff. Uh, and Mark, as always, thanks so much for joining us. Great to be here, Emily. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and dive into our hot topics for the first half of the show today. Uh, we're going to take a little break and then we'll return with a preview of the upcoming City Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, February 24th, 2015. Uh, so Mark, our opening item that we want to talk about today is actually for an opening of the Three Waves Health Clinic. And this is kind of a big deal. We've kind of been anticipating it for a while. They had the grand opening on Tuesday. Uh, how's it going so far? Well, it's going really well. It was interesting. Just a couple weeks ago, we had a joint meeting with the school district just talking about the collaborations that we've been working on and just to get an idea of what we can do in the future. And right after that meeting, we have this clinic that opens up, which is a a collaboration between the city, Winnebago County, and Oshkosh Area School District. And what it's designed to do is to uh, help provide very good quality health care, some basic services that everybody gets at a very affordable price. And it's going to save uh, the taxpayers a lot of money and it's going to give a good quality health care for our employees. So we had an open house and the mayor and some council members and school board members and school district folks and the county folks are there to cut the ribbon, uh, Mayor Tower cut the ribbon, and we had a nice open house where employees were invited to come, and we had really good uh, volume of people coming in throughout the day to learn about the clinic because this is a pretty new concept for a lot of folks that that they're not familiar with. Mm -hmm. And you know, like you said, it's been it seems to be have or have been going pretty well. It's been open. Um, since before Tuesday, the Tuesday was the, the official opening, but they're filling up their appointments. Uh, people are catching on, they're coming in. Um, and I think one of the main questions that a lot of people want to know who aren't city employees or county or school district is if, if, it's, if it's free for the employees, how is it saving us money? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting but, uh, because that is a really weird question mm -hmm. because it's no cost of the employee to go there, no copay, there's no uh, prescription cost for the limited prescriptions that are provided there, but they're very commonly used prescriptions and the services that are provided are very common procedures that a physician's assistant or a nurse, a nurse practitioner can provide. Nowadays, a lot of folks go to the doctor's office and they're meeting with a physician's assistant or a uh, nurse practitioner. So those basic services are the ones that are getting uh, paid for there, but we don't have all the overhead. It's mm -hmm. a very simple clinic with very little overhead. You see the photos or the, the pictures here, there it's a it's a it's a doctor's office. Looks like a regular doctor's office. I was saying before the show there's no uh, beautiful spa treatments for us to take advantage of, but uh, No, not a, not a lot of fancy <laughs> stuff. No, fa I mean it it's and that's what you need. This is all you really need. I it looks honestly just the same as any other doctor's office I've been in. And, and it is. So the idea the reason the way we'll save money is that we pay a basic rate for these folks to be there, but we have very little overhead. Uh, we cover the rent and we cover the personnel, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's going to make us save a lot of money in the long run. Uh, and uh, we believe that with very little uh, participation from the employees, we're going to break even on the clinic with, with minimal participation. And we believe that we could save quite a bit of money over time as more people go to it. And one of the uh, best things that I had heard uh, talking to some folks at the clinic was that um, I think we've done a pretty good job of promoting this with our own employees. And they said that they're getting as much traffic now as they normally get after six months mm. of the clinic being opened. So we're really excited about that because 
then we have usage that is saving us money. This truly is a situation, the more you use this clinic as opposed to some other healthcare provider, the more we're gonna save because we've got a very cost-effective model. Well, that's excellent. We're so happy to hear that it's been successful so far. And I mean, if it's the successful right now, it's only going to continue in the future. So uh, looking forward to, to seeing how that's gone. Um, I haven't gotten out there yet. Hopefully I won't have to go anytime soon. But if I do get sick, I am kind of looking forward to checking it out over there. <laughs> well, that's the whole that's the whole mix is yeah. like, you, you, you know, you got you to get sick to go. But it's also a wellness clinic. And mm -hmm. we're going to be doing some things about it, promoting positive uh health habits and mm -hmm. that'll be something that we'll be getting out with too so you won't always have to be sick yes. it'll be preventive medicine as well yes definitely uh, so mark our next item here uh, is having to do with the citizen survey now this just recently went out on tuesday of this week on the 17th um, it's mailed out to about 1500 1600 uh, citizens here in Oshkosh and maybe you can give us a little bit of background on what exactly this survey is. Sure, uh, the uh, University of Wisconsin Oshkosh uh, Masters in Public Administration program, they have a class uh, policy analysis and part of their work is to do survey work for uh, community and they've selected us, this will be the seventh year we're doing this. So uh, what we do is we get input from residents on two very basic areas, the quality of services that we provide and the importance of those services. And then we compare how are the important services being rated by our, uh, by our public. And we use that to help council make decisions on items. Uh, we provide them with information and, and during the budget process, hopefully they can rely on this information to make very important and sometimes controversial budget decisions. Yes, and uh, you know, it is important, like you said, a lot of, you, you take a survey and sometimes you wonder, is anyone even looking at this? But it, this survey is actually very important in a lot of the decisions that the city makes, kind of taking a pulse of what people are thinking of, um, of the city services. Uh, our budget decisions are often very difficult decisions to make, so you want to make sure that you've got some basis when you're making that decision. And I can tell you over the last several years, council has looked at these surveys and said, but our public is telling us this, so we really do need to keep that in mind as we're making these decisions. It may not be the only factor that goes into play, but it's a significant factor. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, when I've gone to meet with the students before the study starts, I explain this to them and I, I tell them, this isn't just something that's gonna sit on the shelf. This is actually gonna be used, and I've used examples of where the council has relied on this information to make decisions, and uh, I think it's very fulfilling for the students as well. Mm -hmm. And then the other part, and which is always my favorite part, um, it's very cost effective. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, I've seen consultants that can charge as much as fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for a study of this nature. We get it done for less than a thousand dollars out of pocket. Mm -hmm. It's very cost effective, and the information is very reliable. The students. Uh, have to make this scientifically valid. That's part of what they do. Mm -hmm. So um, they have. It's just as valid as any other type of survey. So we're very pleased at the price and at the outcomes that we get. Yes, and we always have the most current uh, citizen survey up on the city website. You can find it right in the hot topic section there. Uh, so if you're curious to see what kind of questions that are asked in the survey, uh, you can definitely take a look at that and get a feel for what it's like. Um, but you know, there's always one different kind of question that's added to the survey every year towards the end of it. Uh, what exactly is that one? We always have different topics, but this year, uh, there was some discussion last year because the city of Appleton has enacted a wheel tax mm -hmm. and somebody's and we were asked well shouldn't we look at that well before we look at that let's get some input from the public so this year's questions will relate to a wheel tax uh, people's you know interest lack of interest in it and what would be the appropriate use of a wheel tax if we did enact it in the first place so it's getting it's gauging that type of input before we start just uh, jumping into uh, doing something, we don't have to do something that another community does just because they did it. Mm -hmm. We need to find out how it's really gonna work or not work for us. And how it's gonna be received, as you can tell from the Oh, I can tell you, it's probably <laughs> not gonna be received very well, but, but it's a matter of finding out the degree to which people are against it, and if so, why? But if we were gonna do it, what do you really want done with that? And let's have a real use for it. So uh, it, it'll be interesting. The students worked hard to get the wording just right so that 
it'll be useful to the council as they're making decisions. Interesting. Interesting to learn the bonus question this year. Uh, so that it should, if you haven't gotten it yet, it should be coming to you soon if you're one of those randomly selected Oshkosh citizens. Uh, so we really encourage you, if you do receive one, to fill it out and uh, stick it in that prepaid postage envelope and send it back to, a, uh, to, the, to the survey givers, <laughs> you should say. Uh, so Mark, our third item here having to do with GoEDC. I know we always do an update uh, on a lot of our CMR episodes here. So what's what's the latest update with GoEDC? Well, the, we're, we've been working on developing a brand that we can use to really market, uh, promote GoEDC, both internally to uh, businesses within the city, but also outside. Mm -hmm. And so we are doing our brand launch on Thursday, March 12th. The public is is absolutely invited. Uh, it's going to be 7:30 in the 7:30 uh, a.m. Uh, at the Oshkosh Convention Center, and we're going to unveil our uh, brand, our new logo, because we've been working with a lot of stuff that we just kind of uh, put together uh, at, in an interim basis. Mm -hmm. Well, we've hired a marketing firm to assist us with this. Uh, we have our brand new marketing and communications manager who just started this week, Erin Sutton. Uh, you'll be getting to meet her over time. Uh, we're in the process of uh, reviewing uh, and, and finalizing uh, perhaps our permanent CEO, and that'll be coming out pretty soon. Hopefully we'll be able to announce it at that moment, uh, but you never know. But uh, we encourage people to come and uh, hear what's going on with GoEDC. Yes, yeah, so again, March 12th, 7.30 a.m. at the Oshkosh Convention Center, and it's definitely open to the public. Uh, and I think it'll be a very exciting morning. Uh, I know you said you didn't even have any idea what it was going to be like uh, before it's unveiled, so uh, it, it's going to be really exciting to see how, how it all rolls out there. I'm looking forward <laughs> to it, definitely. Uh, so Mark, our next thing that we actually want to give a little promotion for is the Oshkosh Public Museum's latest exhibit. We're very excited about it. It's called The Art of the Brick, uh, and it's by Nathan Sawaya, he's a, a artist that uh, I think he was involved in law or something, some other kind of job, and one day he just decided, this isn't for me, I'm gonna go build some Legos and make some beautiful art out of it, and it's a worldwide exhibit. Come right here to Oshkosh, um, and it's it's over at the Oshkosh Public Museum. It's gonna be a great event for families. You know, this appeals to uh, children, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, everybody who's got a little bit of kid inside of them who's ever played with Legos and they've been around for a long time, the art is just phenomenal, and, just, and I've only I've only seen the promotional stuff. I haven't seen what they're really going to mm -hmm. have inside the museum. So you got to go just check it out if you're any have any interest in Legos. Um, you're really going to want to go see this. This is a, a nationally internationally known uh, exhibit that is coming to Oshkosh, and I'm very excited. I know I'm going. So oh yes, uh, absolutely. Oh, I'll be going too. Uh, so that, that opens February 28th. It's open until June 14th, so you do have a little bit of a window to be able to see that. Um, and they're also partnering with the library for some different events, um, you know, dealing with STEM activities and building Legos and things like that. So you can check out the website for those different kinds of activities that they're going to be doing promoting that exhibit. So really looking forward to that. Something else we're really looking forward to is the annual Guns and Hoses hockey game. Uh, it's kind of the little bit of a grudge match between the, the fire department, department and the police department. Uh, and Tell us about that, Mark. <laughs> it is a fun event. Um, I've been there for a number of times. I got to be a guest coach one year, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I always pick the wrong side. I pick fire one year, and they <laughs> lose. Pick police the next day, lose. But it's a great fundraiser as well. And Brett Hamer with uh, our fire department is the one who organizes this. It's actually law enforcement and fire personnel uh, from throughout the area. We don't have enough firefighters or police officers that play hockey right in Oshkosh alone. But March 7th, 4.30 at the, um, the 20th Avenue YMCA. And this year, after many years of doing this, the Y itself will be the uh, designated charity. They've mm -hmm. done some wonderful fundraising for different charities throughout the area, but they chose to do the Y this year, sort of as a, a thank you for the Y to provide the, uh, the ice to the um, uh, to the police and fire departments that put this on. I'm just watching this video. It looks pretty competitive here. So it, it, it's something you don't really want to miss. It's all in good fun. And like you said, it's for an awesome cause. So uh, definitely show up at the 20, 20th Avenue YMCA. It's on at March 7th at 4.30 p.m. Um, and I think it's like a $5 to get a ticket in and it all goes to the charity. So it's a great event. Um, and then one other event that we want to remind people of is the upcoming State of the City up on March 23rd, uh, 6 p.m. at the Convention Center. And we are in the 
midst of the planning for it right now, Mark, aren't we? We're having a lot of fun doing <laughs> it, getting a lot of uh, folks coming in and, and helping us, giving us perspective. We're not going to get into too much detail yet, but mm -hmm. uh, we certainly want people to come on uh, March 23rd at the convention center. Doors open at 6. Uh, I'll start yapping about 6.30. And, of course, we have the department's uh, that have the City Exhibit Expo. Come and talk to department heads, meet some of our new employees, and, and just learn about things that are going on. So we encourage people to attend. Yes, it's a great event, and uh, it's going to be another great event this year. Uh, so, Mark, now it's that time of the show where viewers have the chance to ask their city manager anything they want about things coming up here in Oshkosh. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what the question for Question Mark is this week. So the question this week is a pretty hot topic. What is the new Marion Road water tower going to look like? Everybody's talking about this water tower. Oh, there's a <laughs> lot of questions with it. The short answer is I don't know. Um, the, the reality is, is we have a stakeholders committee uh, to help us put together what they would like to see with the water tower. Um, there's a variety of different uh, feelings about the water tower. Um, there are some people who don't want a water tower at all, and I understand that from an aesthetic standpoint, uh, dealing with the city skyline. But the reality is, is that we need a water tower for fire flow purposes. Right. Um, it's very important that we have a good pressure in this part of the city and a water tower is really the only truly effective way to, to have that. So that's why, that's why we're looking at a water tower. Uh, what the water tower looks like is really subject to discussion. We're having stakeholders meetings, there's a lot of people that say they would like a very artistic design. Uh, you know, you've seen different things where city's logo, but sometimes uh, uh, something about their heritage. Uh, I've seen one that looks like a bushel of apples. There's all so many different designs, but they really come off of three basic designs. So it's going through that group and saying, okay, wh what would you like it to look like? But there are some people who would prefer, they know it's got to be there, so they've, they've resigned themselves that there needs to be a water tower there but they want to keep it low key and, mm -hmm. and very out of the way. So you've got some people who want something very you know, outlandish, other people very subtle, and other people not at all. So that question could have been asked in many different ways, and I've been asked it in those three different ways. So mm -hmm. uh, I encourage people, we're going to have uh, March 5th is the next time we're going to have a, a meeting over at the Senior Center in the Willow Room at 6 p.m. Uh, it's not too late to provide some input, nope. uh, not too late to learn about it as well. So. Uh, you're welcome to come and provide us input. Yes, and they already did have a meeting for um, for this committee actually a couple weeks ago. So the meeting minutes, if you are curious to see how that meeting went, you can do you can find that on the city website under the hot topic section as well. Uh, kind of get a feel for what was discussed and uh, actually prepare for the the next meeting coming up on March 5th here at 6 p.m. Uh, so another great question, as always, uh, if you'd like to send a question to Mark, you can email it to questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us, and he'll answer it on the next episode of CMR. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll dive into the City Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, February 24th. We'll be right back on your City Manager's Report. Want to know what's happening in local government? Stay in the know with City of Oshkosh Government Meetings, live on TV City Cable 10, online at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org, and on Community Radio WOCT 101.9 FM. Miss the live coverage? No problem. Catch replays on City Cable 10. Stream online from oshkoshcommunitymedia.org, or visit youtube.com forward slash Oshkosh Community Media Services. Hi, I'm City Manager Mark Roloff. In the last few years, we've seen Oshkosh grow in so many ways, and in 2015, I know we can continue to prosper. Join me Monday, March 23rd at the Convention Center for the annual State of the City Address and City Exhibit Expo. Doors open at 6 p.m., with the State of the City being delivered at 6.30. Following the presentation, we'll honor some standout community members and then close out the night with the Expo, where you can go one-on-one -on -one with city staff. Monday, March 23rd, Convention Center. Be there and be involved in your community. Welcome back.
back to your City Manager's Report. Thanks again for joining us. I'm your host, Emily Mikowski, joined, as always, by your City Manager, Mark Roloff. Uh, so, Mark, we're going to go ahead and dive into the City Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, February 24th, 2015. Uh, and the first item on the agenda, actually, is an introduction of a new staff member. Alexa Najunas uh, has joined our planning team. We're real excited to have Alexa joining us. Uh, we've got a, part of her responsibility is going to be our neighborhood uh, programs, uh, organizing neighborhood groups and engaging them in, in helping improve our neighborhoods. Um, Alexa is going to be joining Liz Williams, who's been just doing an outstanding job of, of getting people interested. And uh, we want people to know who Alexa is because if you want to form a neighborhood organization, you're going to likely be working with Alexa or Liz. So we, we want to get these folks out in the community and uh, give us a call at Planning Services if you're interested in forming your own neighborhood group. Otherwise, Liz or Alexa will be knocking on your door. Oh, yes. They're, they're right down in there with all the neighborhoods. Um, and they're, I mean, Liz, come on, she's doing an awesome job. And everybody knows her around the neighborhood area. So uh, we're really looking forward to having a new, a new planner on our team. Uh, so, Mark, our next item here is a presentation, actually, uh, as well as a new resolution dealing with that presentation, is from the League of Wisconsin Municipalities and the Partnership for Prosperity. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I just finished serving my term on the League of Wisconsin Municipalities board, and Jerry DeShane is our new director, and he's going to be reporting to the council on uh, what we've done with our strategic plan, as well as what, what we're calling our uh, Partnership for Prosperity agenda. And it really is talking about how important uh, cities and villages are to the overall economy of Wisconsin. And just a couple little stats that uh, a lot of people may not realize, but 87% of all manufacturing property and 89% of all commercial property are located in cities and villages in the state. And when you think about that, the, the power of our economy is really driven within our cities and villages. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to try to make the point is that in order for us to be able to help businesses improve the economy we need to have strong cities and villages because they uh, businesses are relying on us to provide a good quality of life good public safety good streets that's what it's all about so uh, Jerry's making the rounds to different uh, city council meetings and he's gonna just uh, just uh, pop in on us on Tuesday night and just talk about what's going on well it sounds like it'll be a really interesting presentation a lot of really cool statistics that, I mean, even what you just said there, it's amazing how, how much of our uh, economy is in these cities and villages. So looking forward to that. Um, and then the next item, they'll be voting on that as a new resolution. Um, following that, we definitely want to talk about some, uh, a few easements and right of ways and construction. Uh, actually, it looks like about five items on the agenda are devoted to uh, these things which are related to the aviation business park. So what exactly is going on with all these things? This is all of the mechanics uh, paperwork that has to get done in order for us to uh, get the ball rolling on getting the roads constructed, um, getting utilities in for the aviation uh, business park. Yeah. Uh, we had the groundbreaking back in September, but it's been pretty quiet since then. But uh, we've got the road specifically identified where it's going to go. So now we have to reset the boundary lines based on the new road. The road's a little curvy to get around some uh, wetland areas and also we need to what's called loop the utilities to connect one area with an, with another so that there's two sources of water to get to the um, to get there and so to do that we've got to loop some utilities and we need some easements so all this paperwork is getting done so resolutions 15-66 through 15-70 are all related to that on our consent agenda pretty routine housekeeping stuff but very important for us to get the project done. Yes, and you know, you're talking about these utilities and it's a lot of times people don't realize all the stuff that goes underneath a, a, an, avi or a, an aviation business park, but any business park. So it's, it's actually kind of interesting to hear the behind the scenes view of it all. Uh, so Mark, our next item here that we want to talk about is uh, the St. Patrick's Day Parade and Party on March 14th, 2015. Uh, tell us about that. <laughs> we have a lot of special events that are getting approved on the meeting agenda, but the St. Patrick's Day Parade is something that uh, has been gaining some popularity, and so we want to make sure we let people know uh, the parade itself on St. Patrick's Day starts at 4 o'clock. It's going to start at CP and I believe go up to uh, Irving or Parkway, but um, March 14th, 1 to 11 p.m., uh, the old King Cliff lot will have some tents and things set up for uh, celebrations, some Irish bands. But we get a lot of people who participate in the parade and a lot of families that come out. Um, 
I've been in the parade a <laughs> couple times. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you can see everybody loves to catch the candy, So, uh, <laughs> but a lot of entertainment. So um, it's probably the beginning of the outdoor festival season. It but is. Uh, let, and let's hope that it's a little warmer than it is right now. Oh, yes. We'll keep our fingers crossed. But again, yes, March 14th, 1 to 11 p.m., uh, the St. Patrick's Day Parade. And, uh, well, hopefully see everybody out there. Uh, the next thing we're actually really looking forward to is uh, the Oshkosh Saturday Farmer's Market, a resolution on here um, for their market in the park. Uh, and that would be through July 15th to September 30th. But, Mark, give us a little bit of background on what we're looking at here. The Farmer's Market Group never sits on their hands, ever. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Carlene Leatherman and her husband Dennis are um, now kind of permanent and uh, full-time runners of this event. They want to do um, a farmer's market on the south side of town. They've identified South Park and they're going to have a farmer's market now on Wednesdays uh, beginning uh, in mid-July running through the end of September we're so excited. I think there's going to be more details to come. Mm -hmm. You got to get the Leathermans in on Oshkosh today oh, to find gosh. out what they got up their sleeve. Mm -hmm. But um, they are just so dedicated and they really want to engage residential areas. And so we're going to have it in South Park. Um, everybody's on board with doing it. And we're, we, I can't wait to, uh, to see what they have out there on Wednesday afternoons. It's just an awesome idea, especially for people that want to, you know, stop by after work. Uh, but yes, like you said, we'll, we'll have more information on that to come. Um, and Mark, our last item is under new resolutions here. Uh, another really exciting thing uh, is for an inclusive playground over at South Park as well. So uh, tell us a little bit about this. The whole process actually started in 2011. This has been a process that's literally been four to five years. Mm -hmm. And back in 2011, the council had approved uh, setting aside $100,000 for an inclusive playground with the condition that the local funds match that. Well, since that's been done, it actually wasn't originally proposed at South Park. It was at another park, but for a variety of reasons, it was felt that South Park was maybe a little uh, better to have it located there. And you can just see um, what, the, what the park looks like. Um, the scope of the work got a lot bigger, uh, so the cost went up. Instead of 200000 it's more like $280,000. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that the group did sa said was, we need to get 140000 now raised because we said we got to come up with at least half of it. Um, Parks Director Ray Maurer has identified $40,000 in savings from some other projects that we've done over the last couple years. So we're going to council with um, the uh, Oshkosh Community Foundation, which has helped this group raise that money. They weren't necessarily involved at the beginning, but they've really been the impetus behind getting the fundraising done. And the inclusive playground really by definition is a playground that is intended to be inclusive for all ages and all mm -hmm. abilities uh, because it's not just a uh, a lot of people think about playground just for kids well parents like to go take their kids to playground so whether the child is disabled or the the parent or the grandparent or the caregiver is disabled we want them to be able to to use this uh, playground uh, rubberized surface with ramps and shading areas and just lots of different cool things that people of all ages and abilities will be able to use. So that's why it's inclusive. Mm -hmm. um, we're so happy that uh, the group that originally put this together, the Community Foundation and our Parks Department have come together and raised $280,000 to get this playground done. We're really pleased and proud. Oh, what an amazing project and I'm so happy to see this on the agenda and we're, we're looking so forward to seeing this out at South Park and it's just gonna, I think it's gonna be great. So uh, it looks like that's all the time we have for today, Mark. So as always, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, glad to do it. <laughs> Again, the City Council meeting is this Tuesday, February 24th at 6 p.m. You can watch it live on City Cable 10 or online at ashkashcommunitymedia.org or you can listen to it on the radio at 101.9 WOCT. And that's also now online and on the TuneIn Radio app for mobile devices. Make sure to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter for all your community and government programming and updates. Or you can check out our YouTube channel for government meeting replays and past episodes of your favorite programs. Don't forget, if you have a question for City Manager Mark Roloff, send it to question mark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us and he'll answer it on the next episode of City Manager's Report. Thanks again for joining us today on your City Manager's Report and we'll see you next time.